السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام و... ورحمة الله ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, which prophet have we been talking about? أسمى آدم عليه السلام آدم عليه السلام Was he the last prophet or the first prophet? هنا First prophet First prophet, okay <coughs> So starting from Alia Tell us something about what we have learned so that, far. Um, that Allah, um, he told um, Adam Islam and um, Hawa Islam that um, don't go near the tree. And then um, Jin, Iblis, Shaitan. Shaitan, kept on telling them um, every day um, that Go and go near the tree and eat from it. Eat from it, okay. So very good, mashallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam, do not go near this tree. But Iblis, he carried on saying to them that go, 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 go. So Aqsa, was Iblis a friend of Adam or an enemy? Enemy. Enemy, why? Why Alia? Oh, here I go. On. Because um, <coughs> Adam alayhi salam was created, Allah um, called um, to do every, all the angels to do sajda to him, but um, Iblis the, didn't. Iblis didn't. And he and said then, that I'm better than him, yeah. didn't he? Okay, so what can you remember about Adam alayhi salam's story so far? Nice and loud. Um, Come on. Okay, so they were sent down from paradise. Alia, do you know where Adam alayhi salam was sent? Yeah. Yeah. India. Masha Allah, very good. Good girl. Okay, and where was Hira? Where was Hawa alayhi salam sent? Near Makkah. Near Makkah or Sham? Okay, or near Makkah. Okay, and um, anything else that you want to say about Adam alayhi salam? Adam. Adam alayhi salam was first created um, the first human in paradise yeah. and um, he was barred because he was um, lonely yeah. so um, Allah created another human and her name was called Har Hawa not Halwa, Hawa <laughs> Hawa alayhi salam no. All right. are you missing Halwa? <laughs> you want to eat Halwa? he said Halwa Hawa, Hawa, H-A-W-A, Hawa, alayhi salam, okay, good girl, Asma? Um, they both met in Jabli al-Fahad. Yeah, louder. They, they both met at a place which is today known as Jabali Arafat, okay, the Mount of Arafat. Right, Anissa? Um, um, Arafat means to recognize. Yeah, why is it recognized, why do we call it recognized, because they Adam alayhi salam, and Hawa alayhi salam, they met there, they recognized each other, okay? And Shaitan persuaded them to eat from the tree because he told them, if you go near the tree and eat from the tree, you will become an angel Good and girl. you will live forever. But he said, if you don't eat from the tree, you'll die. Yeah, you'll die. So did Adam alayhi salam hear about a lie before? Was there any lying before? No. no. There was no lying. So who lied? Who was the first person to lie? Iblis. Iblis. So if we lie today, if we lie today, so who's our friend then? Iblis. Iblis. Who are we following? Iblis. Iblis. Okay. So, moving on now. Okay. Everyone listen carefully now, inshallah. This is the story of Adam alayhi salam and this is part four. This is part four. Any important notes, you can write. Okay. Any important notes. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam onto earth. How long did they live in Jannah for? Does anyone know? For 40 years. 40 years. And how long did Adam alayhi salam live in this world? How long did Adam alayhi salam live in this world? Come on. Guess. Um, Take a wild guess. I told you this yesterday. Did you? Of course I did. <laughs> yeah. A thousand years. A thousand. Yeah, he lived for a thousand years in this world, Adam alayhi salam. Okay, and Ali, how tall was Adam alayhi salam? Um, 
feet. Approximately 60 feet tall. Some people say he was 90 feet. Okay. <gasps> Yeah, some people say it was 90 feet. Okay, so now moving on. Listen carefully now. This part is really, really important. And this part is really, really interesting. And this part, this next part is you need to understand this carefully. Okay. Now look, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam was sent onto this world. They were sent onto this world as a punishment. Okay. Because they could have stayed into paradise. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... This was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. Okay, is that making sense? Yeah. When they were on this world now, when they were in this world, living in this world, okay, because they were married, they had children. They had children. children. Now, in the early stages, in the early stages, what was happening was, every time Hazrat Hawa alayhi salam was going to have a baby or babies, okay? She was going to have twins. She always had twins. A boy and a girl. Then a boy and a girl. Together, do you understand? A boy and a girl, then a boy and a girl, a boy and a girl, and a boy and a girl. Is that understood first? Yeah? So they say, some people say, one of the first child, boy that was born, his name was Qabil. Qa? Beal, okay. In English, we also know him as Cain. We also know him as Cain. So Qabil, when he was born, he was born with a twin. Finish it off. He was born with a twin, boy, girl, sister, yeah. friend. What was he born with? A twin sister. Qabil, when he was born, he was born with a twin sister. Okay. Then came Habil. Habil, another brother, okay, born from a different, a few months later, okay, then he was born, and he was born with another twin sister. So, Qabil and his twin sister, Habil and his twin sister, okay. So, this carried on. Many people say that Hawa alayhi salam had over 100 children like this. She had how many? How many? So, 100. So, every time she gave birth, there were twins, 200 children, do you understand? Example, do you understand? This is just an example. Some people say there was more than 100 children like that, okay? Now, what was the wisdom in this? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this? Because he wanted mankind to spread, okay, through marriage, okay? So now, the first boy that was born, what, what was his name? Qabil, okay, he was born with a sister. He was born with a sister. sister. And Habil was born with a sister as well. Now the rule was that Qabil, he could not marry his own twin sister. But he had to marry Habil's sister. And Habil could not marry his twin sister. But he had to marry Qabil's twin sister. Do you understand? Is that understood? So the first two, second two, third, and it carried on like this. So you could not marry your own twin sister. You had to marry the next one. So Qabil was supposed to marry Habil's sister. And Habil is supposed to marry Qabil's sister. Okay? Is that making sense? Twin sister. That came out. Okay? So now what happens is Qabil, the person, the woman that he is supposed to marry... She's not that good looking. In books it says, okay, she's not that good looking. Okay. But his own twin sister, who is going to be the wife of who? Habil. Habil. She is very good looking. She is beautiful. Do you understand? So Kabil says that I don't, why should I have to marry my, why should I have to marry someone else? Why can't I just marry my own twin sister? The other thing that you have to remember is in today's time and age, you cannot marry a sister. It's not allowed. Even by, you're not allowed, okay? You have to find someone or cousin or far cousin or friend, do you understand? Someone that you got to know or someone chooses your family member, chooses someone, okay? So in today's time and age, this doesn't happen. But at that time, this was needed, do you understand? So Kabil said, why don't I just marry my own twin sister? Yeah, is that making sense? So then... They start arguing with each other. And Kabil says to Habil that I want to marry my own twin sister and you cannot marry her. Is that making sense? Have you understood everything so far? Yeah. 
<coughs> so what the law was that time was you are not allowed to marry your own twin sister, but you have to marry the next person, meaning the next one in the row. Now they started arguing over this, and remember over here, Habil, Habil was stronger. He was the younger brother, but he was stronger. Okay? So when he finds out that Qabil carries on saying this, what does he say? He says, come on, let's go tell our father, who is a prophet. Who was the father? Adam alayhi salam. So let's go tell our father Adam alayhi salam and he will come up with something that he will tell us what to do. Do you understand? So they go to Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam says, okay, what to do is both of you give something in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like a sacrifice, an offering. Do you understand? Like at the time of Qurbani, we do a sacrifice. We sacrifice an animal. Do you understand? So what Adam alayhi salatu wasalam says is, My dear sons, both of you make an offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever's offering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts, then his right. Do you understand? So if Qabil, for example, if Qabil gives something in the path of Allah, and Habil gives something in the path of Allah, and Allah chooses one thing from them, so that means that his is accepted, and the other one's offering is not accepted. Is that making sense? So what they do? What do they do? Qabil, he owns crops. Qabil, he's got loads and loads of crops. Do you understand? And Habil, he owns loads of loads of sheep. Do you understand? Have you understood that? What does Qabil own? Crops. crops. How can you remember Qabil owns crops? Qa, crops. Qa for Qabil, Ka for crops. Similar. Habil, do you understand? He owns sheep. Sheep, okay? So what Adam alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam says is there on that mountain, on that mountain, both of you take your offerings. So Qabil took his crops and Habil took his sheep. Like one, two, or he took one sheep. Do you understand? They left it on the top of the mountain. They did dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, give us a sign. Yeah, give us a sign. Okay? That whose offering is accepted. Okay? So in them days, in them days, what do you know what used to happen in them days for the offering to be accepted? Anyone know? Anyone? What's that? You like that? Yeah. What used to happen? Huh? No. You're nearly there. Come on, say it. You're going to regret it. Come on. What do you mean? What used to happen is, for example, this is the mountain. They used to leave the stuff there. There was a sheep there. And there was some crops there. What would happen was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send lightning and it would burn the offering which is accepted. Do you understand? So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted, it would burn to ashes. And this was a sign that your offering has been accepted. Now, why do you think it would burn? Why do you think the offering... For example, if they sacrificed a sheep, do you understand what I'm saying? then there was no poor people that they could give it to. Do you understand? If they had any crops, of, there was no poor, pe poor people that they could give it to. Like in today's time and age, there are very poor people. You can give that to. But in them days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, put the offering there and the lightning will come. And then whoever's offering is accepted, then they will find out that way. Okay? Can you stop biting your nails? That's fine. Yeah. So Habil, he offered some crops, but you know what Habil did, which was no good. I mean, sorry, Habil. Habil offered sheep, his sheep. Habil, when he went to choose the sheep to be offered, he picked the best one. He said, I'm giving this to Allah. I'm giving this to Allah. So he picked the best sheep, best one out of them. That is why when we give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should give our best stuff so many times we see that in the mosque people put atar people put atar 
But most of the time, the atar that ends up in the mosque is the one that they don't like themselves. Unwanted. Unwanted. And it really, really smells bad. And if someone puts it on, to be honest with you, it's like, it smells like rust. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> so if you are giving something in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give Allah the best. So if you want to put something inside the mosque, put something nice. Do you understand? Allah says, give your best. So Qabil, he put some, he got some, what do you call it, um, crops together. But they were the crops that no one wanted. Do you understand? Yeah. They, were, they had shriveled and they had gone. No one really, you couldn't do anything with it. So it wasn't benefit to anyone. So what Qabil did, he got these crops and they were no good. They were shriveled. They were no good to anyone. And he offered them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Habil did, he got this really nice heavy animal, sheep. Do you understand? With loads and loads of meat on it. And he gave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my question to you is, whose offering is better? Habil. Alia. Habil. Habil. Because he chose the best. He gave the best. The best. Do you understand? This is teaching us as well that when you give a gift to someone, do you understand? When you give a gift to someone, you know, you give them, if you're going to give someone a gift, you give them the best. You try your best. Do you understand? So many times someone gives me a gift. Do you understand? It's a really nice box. Do you understand? This is true. It's a really nice box from outside. And the bottle inside, you know, it's very shocking this, but the bo bottle inside is, is, they know, people do not, but the bottle inside is broken. Do you understand? Before you give a gift, you check, don't you? But people give it. They just think it's all right. Just give it. Do you understand? So I just tell them as well that, you know, this bottle that you gave me, it was broken. People say that they don't know. Do you understand? But I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they knew. So, so, I mean, I received a bottle. Someone gave it to me in my hand. That's totally not suspicious. Yeah. So someone gave it to me in my hand and he said, oh, Maulana Sahib, you are doing so much good work. And so oh, are you, you giving are him a broken <laughs> bottle. <laughs> you are so good. Oh, beautiful. And then he goes, I brought you this bottle of Atar. And then I went home in, in enjoyment and I opened it. And when I opened it, the half of it comes up like this. And half of it stays inside, meaning there's, it's broken. <laughs> it's got massive crack. But before you give a gift, you check. Anyway, that's something different. We don't want to go down that lane. But what I'm saying is whatever you give to anyone or whatever you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be the best. Now, who's... Offering was accepted, do you think? Das. Hey, Rah, who's? Habib. Habib. Anissa. I think Habib's um, was accepted because he um, gave up on the hill. He gave up his best with the meat and everything. But Kabir just picked out the um, worst ones of his crops because he thought, oh, yeah, Allah will just pick me because I think he got a bit too excited and he thought, oh, yeah, I'm just going to win. So then he just took the worst crops basically because he thought no one was going to use them. Yeah. So lightning came down. It took the sheep. It accepted the sheep. They came back to Adam alayhi salam and Adam alayhi salam said that it's clear. It's in black and white. Do you understand? We know who is right and we know who is wrong. So Habil, you, you are going to get married to Qabil's sister and Qabil, you are going to get married to Habil's sister. Now Qabil, he was angry. He became fuming. He, he was on fire. He wanted revenge now. He said, how is that possible? How is that possible? How did I get it wrong? So then what happens is he says to Habil, his brother, this is not over. This is not over. over. Don't you think for a second that you're going to get away with this? You know, like sometimes you fall out with your friends and your friend says to you that, don't you think you're going to get away with this? You're going to get it. Do you understand? So in the yes. same way, in the same way, Habil was told by Qabil that don't you think this is finished? I'm going to come for you. Do you understand? Anyway, Habil said to him, Quran says, Habil said to him, if you are intending to kill me, do you understand? And Habil was the younger one, but he was the stronger one. Do you understand? So Habil said to him, if you are going to kill me, then I'm not going to raise a finger to hurt you. And if it's like that, then he says, 
I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni Allah rabbal alameen. He says, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're going to kill me, that's totally up to you. Do you understand? So then Qabil, he goes away from there. He's angry and he's thinking, what shall I do? Now, do you think Qabil knew how to kill Habib? What do you think? No. Was there any killing from before? No. no he no. didn't know. Just so like what happens lies. now? Yeah, what happens now? Our biggest open enemy comes again. He comes again. <gasps> shaitan. What does shaitan say now? Go on. I think he's going to say to Gabby, oh, um, just kill him. How? Go on. Mm. All right. <laughs> Her hand went up. He nearly went through the ceiling, but then he got nothing to say. Here. <laughs> With a knife. Huh? So, Qabil wanted to kill his brother. Shaitan came to him and he said to him, You want to kill your brother? He says, Yes. He says, I'll show you how to kill him. He picks up a big stone. He picks up a big stone and he throws it on the floor. And he says, Picture this as his being his head on the floor and this stone hitting his head. He goes, You will kill him. So, Qabil finds out a way to kill Habil. Okay, and they say one day when Qabil and Habil are by themselves, that's exactly what Qabil does. He gets a stone and um, Habil is there and he hits him on the head. Do you understand? And then with anger, he hits him over and over again and then he ends up killing Habil. Okay, now listen, before this he was angry. Before this he was angry. Now, what happened now is because he killed his brother, his anger's gone. gone. His anger's gone. gone. Now, what do you think he's doing? He's sitting there. His brother's dead body is there. His brother's dead body is there, covered in blood. So what is Kabil doing now? He's sitting there and he regrets what he has done. And that. Yeah, he regrets what he has sure. done. But does he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness? Mm. No. He's just got a regret. That's why when you commit a sin or when you do something wrong, it's good to cry. It's good to cry and say that I feel bad that I just did this something wrong. But at the same time, you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Do you understand? So what he did now, he didn't know how to bury his brother. He didn't know what to do with his brother. He didn't know what to do with his brother. So what did he do? So he carried his brother on his shoulder and he walked, walked and walked. Okay, Asma, I don't think that I don't know you're biting your nails, hiding behind them. Stop it, Asma. Right, so Habil, so Qabil, what he does, Qabil, he carries his brother Habil over his shoulder for a full day and he walks in the opposite direction of his house. Do you understand? Because he doesn't want his parents to know yeah. what he's done. So he's feeling bad, but he carries his brother. His brother's dead, lifeless. Do you understand? So then the night falls, he lays him down, and then he goes to sleep himself again. And then in the morning, he wakes up again. And he looks at his brother, and he starts crying again, and he carries him. And then he walks again. Full day he walks, away from home. And then the third, the third day he walks again. He walks again, with his brother over his shoulder, carrying him, carrying him, carrying him. And then he puts him down. Then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a sign and in Quran it's mentioned two crows come two crows come and they come and sit in front of him and they both start fighting each other then one crow kills the other crow one crow kills the other crow and then the one that kills the other crow with his beak and his um, what do you call it body parts he digs a hole he digs a hole and then he puts that other crow inside and then he puts mitti over that crow he puts soil over that crow that's when Qabil says that you know I didn't even understand the fact that I could have buried my brother like this do you understand so that's when he digs a hole and then he puts Habil inside and then he covers Habil with soil and that's when he comes back towards his own house okay now what happens in the meantime is uh, Iblis, he's the one, he's the open enemy. He's the one that taught Kabil to kill. Correct me, yeah? 
At the same time, he goes in a human form and he goes to Amma Hawa alayhi salam, our great, 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 great grandma, Hawa alayhi salam. He goes to her and he tells her that Qabil has killed Habil. He tells her. You understand? He tells the mother. But that wasn't. Yeah, go on. But, but I think Iblis is trying to get. Um, Kabil in trouble because he was the one who met, who taught him how to Yeah, kill. but he's not going to say that, is he? No. So many times when you mess about with Aksa and Aksa starts crying, when we ask Aksa, why are you crying for? You're not going to own up and say, are you that? I'm the one that hit her. <laughs> Do you get it? So, Iblis, he went and told Amma Hawa alayhi salam, but he said, Kabil has killed Habil. So Amma Hawa alayhi salam, she said, what does it mean by killed? What does it mean by killed? She didn't know what killed means. So then Iblis says to her that he won't be able, Habil will not be able to eat, drink, walk, look, or move his body parts ever again. And that's when she understands that there's nothing that they can do with him now. He's dead. Do you understand? After this, what happens is Iblis, he disappears. Now, do you think the parents are going to like Kabil? No. What we have to remember, the last part that we're going to say over here, is what we have to remember over here now, is Shaitan, he has made a promise. The devil has made a promise. Open enemy. What is that promise? Go on, Anissa. He's going to take all mankind into Jahannam with Jahannam him. Jahannam with him. That's the promise he's made. So he's going to carry on learning new tricks and tricking people. Do you understand? What we have to understand so far is Shaitan, every chance that he got, he was against this human being, Adam salam, and his children. And it's carried on up until now. Okay? Is that making sense? So we've got Habil killed his brother Habil. He buried him with like copying a crow. Do you understand how the crow... Buried him, do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we learned that Iblis went to the mother and then he told them, do you understand what I'm saying? That uh, your son Qabil has killed Habil, do you understand? And who yeah. taught all this Qabil? Uh, Qabil was taught by Shaitan. The open enemy. Okay, okay. okay, so this is where we're going to stop for over here now, mashallah. Very good, okay? okay? Now, yesterday we did an appeal for, what did we do appeal for? Help Foundation. Help Foundation, but what were we collecting for? Huh? Atta. Atta. What were we collecting for? Atta. Flower. The main focus. Okay, not the flower that you give to someone that you love. Flower meaning the one roti that we can eat. So I told you that day as well. I told you yesterday as well that there's loads of people that are in Pakistan, even in UK as well, mm -hmm. that they are on lockdown. And because of the lockdown, they are not being able to get any food. So in Pakistan as well, there's so many poor people, they work a day, full day, then they get paid. That's not happening now. They're not getting paid because they're at home. There's no welfare system over there. No one's going to come to you and say, okay, are you at home? Here's some benefits. Enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not happening over there. So these people are saying that even if we can get some atta and we'll mix it with water and make some roti for ourselves. Make some roti for ourselves. Do you understand? So what we're appealing for, Health Foundation is appealing for, is five pound for a bag of flour. How many kgs is it? Ten, Ten kgs. Kg. Ten kg, which is a lot, mashallah. Okay. So anyone that's listening to this, and anyone that can get in touch with me, my name is Khalid zero seven four five six four zero four triple five. And um, anyone that wants to make a donation, anyone that wants more information, they can contact me, 07-456-404-555. I gave a number yesterday as well. I'll just run that number by you again, if I can find it. Uh, yes, there's another number, okay, over here. This person, Malana Tahir, is my brother. 077-942-79624. We both uh, run Health Foundation. So anyone that can help, please help. My number is 07-456-404-555. And I hope you enjoyed today's story about Adam alayhi salam. Inshallah, we will meet roughly approximately same time again tomorrow. And then Moran Atahir's number 077-942-79624. 
any information or any donations or anyone that wants to help us on a larger scale, please get in touch. Jazakumullahu khairan wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stay home and stay safe.